Thank you everyone for joining. Uh, welcome to the um, Open Source uh, Product Roadmap for 2021 webinar. Uh, we're gonna go quickly today, or quickly within the next hour at least, to, through um, our plans for open social. I'm gonna start a bit broader with our vision with what we're planning to achieve in the next year with also for us, it has been a very full and productive um, if, well, special in a positive and negative way, 2020. Um, we have a lot of outcomes out of the journey we made to this point, uh, where we decided to reset our focus in some regards to go deeper into some areas while um, maybe not pursuing others. Um, in, in the context of this, uh, already also the new branding, um, and also from a product perspective, we're gonna go through, uh, through, through a lot of things that we, we really want to improve on. And um, so in, in that regard, I want to start a bit broader with vision and mission and goal so that we can, while we, ex while we go through those things, we want to improve why, why certain decisions have been made. I want to tie it back to this overall um, uh, ideas of open source. So we're going to start basically with our New Year's resolutions. Um, as I said, we were uh, really thinking about where do we want to go with open source or what uh, do we want to achieve in 2021. Um, this process that we already started throughout the whole last year, um, working with um, a lot of people together with experts on different fields, uh, internally did a lot of research um, in, in, in quite, quite a few things uh, that I'll uh, also mention later again. In, in the product part. So um, our vision of open source is a pro privacy, anti-monopoly and open web that inspires trusted connections and collaboration. And um, our mission is to become the world's, world's leading community engagement platform that grows with the ambition of its users. And this is really important for us as we come from an open source background and this is really still tied to open source. And for us, we, we want to embrace that and um, also give back to the open source communities. Always try to find open source solutions where possible, even when, uh, and also collaborate with our partners. All of this, uh, hopefully, coming back in the product decisions that we're making and in the vision we're going to have for open source for 2021. So um, for this, I, um, we set quite a few goals. So to to create those digital spaces where people want to collaborate, where they want to foster their connections and where they want to um, also have, or, or where they can have a certain trust towards what's happening with the data privacy, uh, what's happening with, with, um, with information the platform collects, with information they give to other people. And um, especially in our times now where we move towards a more digital approach to connect, to, to collaborate, more and more digital, I mean, that's already an ongoing process, but it has been really kickstarted with um, the corona pandemic and with uh, changing in work life, but also in a social life. And for us, it's, it's, it's really important that we can create these digital spaces online that empower to share, that allow people to connect with each other and have a, have a trust in this space they're moving. So we really want to bring people together online and, and it's, it's important that you can manage this space um, effectively and um, it is a very complex field. Uh, everybody who, of you probably knows this. There is a lot of settings, a lot of customizations. We want to be flexible, but that also comes with a little bit of a price of complexity, obviously, and we're gonna work a lot to improve on that. So um, another part of it is gonna be the empowering people to share knowledge. Uh, as it's a big, big part of what makes online communities or generally meeting and collaboration, may it be online or offline, so valuable and relevant that you gain new knowledge uh, as an organization, as an individual, as a group together working towards a certain goal. So this is really a core thing that, that is important for us to foster knowledge sharing and collaboration. Then um, another part um, as a goal for us is to activate and engage members. Obviously, that's a, a, a core reason why most organizations or um, uh, companies, people start a community to, to have um, an active membership um, member base on the community that 
is really engaged in the community uh, that takes part that is part of this knowledge sharing that gives back also to the community and we want to give a lot of tools to the community to achieve that so same here drive your organizational goals um, this also comes back in the extensions and monetization payment structures and things like that by creating digital spaces it's really important to keep the um, the, the goals of the organization in mind and to try to work towards those goals and try to give tools to achieve those goals. So you need to, yeah, to create a real world impact, you need to also represent this real world structures on a, in an online space, in a digital community. And um, that's definitely something we uh, have a lot of tools for and that we're gonna try to create a whole package for the, the next, uh, during the next year. So with those overall goals in mind and with the vision in mind towards an open source, um, public and, and trustworthy product and internet, um, I want to go towards the product plan for open social for 2021. So there are basically three components of open social that are relevant and that are going to split up. And that's the core and it's the open core of open social. This is, um, this is the the current status and will be also for for the future that the core of open source is an open source product that can be downloaded via um, via drupal.org and that can be used open source and it's 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 very important for us to give uh, support to this community to really improve the core product to make it usable for everyone who, who, who wants to use it and to also cover a lot of use cases while on our platforms and extensions and our product SaaS product, we are focusing a lot on our use case and our clients use case work with them together. The core team is really a bit separate from this and is working towards a best possible um, to a best po to a best possible um, a best possible uh, base for everyone who's using it not only us but also other agencies other individuals other organizations that are using for um the so for the core de development how will our core development um help to achieve goals so to to create a trustworthy environment you really need a good performance and a good security of your platform uh, people need to have the trust in the technology to be able to move there freely, to share freely, and to 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 have to create an engaging space for themselves. Um, we're going to work on, uh, to improve uh, the performance of open social continuously. This is going to be a fixed budget part of our core team to look into new ways to improve our performance of open social. I'm also going to come back to this later with the third part that I didn't mention yet, which is decoupled. And um, there, uh, there, and within the core team, we are gonna improve on how images are loaded, how we implement lazy loading, how we implement big type. So all of those technologies that help perceived as well as actual performance of the website, but also help the, to improve the security of the platform. So making sure that no possible data leaks are there, but also that um, we can that as a community manager and site manager, you can determine as closely as possible how are people engaging with the platform. So we're working on taxonomy management. Uh, we are working on a taxonomy management role so that you can appoint people who are specifically tar uh, managing a certain a content area on the platform. So there's going to be a lot more granularity in who you can give permissions and this will this will be a, a big um, big focus point for us in the next year. The um, second big part of the core development will be the will be a consolidation for open social. So we have grown considerably last year in features and um, generally uh, the the size of the whole product in. Um, for us, it's very important to, to take a step back. This is also going to come back in the extension and decoupled projects. Um, and we want to look into how can we improve the existing features and how can we make sure that the user has an ideal experience within the product. So having features on the platform on the one hand is great for, um, for 
improving what people can do there, but that doesn't mean that it feels like a perfectly round experience always for users. So we really need to take, want to take the next step there in um, tying tying a knot around it, making sure there are not dead ends for users, making sure that people can really um, always have a have a next step to go, know what they are expected from the system, know where to go, and know that if they finish the certain actions, there is another thing waiting. I'm going to come back there also to the consolidation in the next slide, because we're also going to revisit some of the older features or actually also some of the features that have been added recently um, to really make sure that it feels round, that there is improvement in the existing ones that a little, uh, that a few of the smaller things that um, were left on the way are added now and complete the whole experience of those features that were there. Um, the third part, as I already mentioned, we do have an open source background and this is still a core component of our company culture. So we're really working on um, in, in investing to give back to Drupal um, or other open source projects. So we're sponsoring, for example, uh, the Gym team, which we really like, which we imp implemented in our product as a new, um, as a new, uh, sorry, as a new uh, admin team. But we're also working, for example, in collaboration with the European Commission to sponsor part of the group development uh, for the group core feature in Drupal. And um, we are also planning to invest time into developing um, um, or helping new, uh, sorry, helping Drupal modules that we are using, contribution models, um, to be updated to Drupal 9 and making it, making them Drupal 9 ready and giving back code that we wrote for improving open source which works Drupal 9 completely. So um, as I said, I'm going to come back to the consolidation part a bit and to mention or to talk through a, through a few features that are really important for us. So, so far with the other two, those are more general initiatives or ongoing parts that we're going to focus on in the next year. Every, every quarter, bit by bit, uh, going to work on performance, going to work on security, going to work on Drupal 9 compatibility, going to work on improving Drupal uh, core, Drupal group, and so forth. Uh, but there are also obviously features that our core team uh, really wants to focus on and improve within the open source experience. Uh, one thing that we already started in quarter one is, gonna, is the notification engine and the forms for content creation. So, as I mentioned, we want to visit some of the older things uh, in open source um, and make sure it still fits within our current concept or part of it also just has grown organically like the forms or content or in general the all uh, entity creation. Um, as we added more and more functionality and they have been placed in the forms and uh, while well, this just needs a bit, little bit of reworking to have a basic concept about this and we reset uh, the, the, the whole creation process. Um, this is gonna be something that we're gonna roll out um, mid of the year where we are working on now currently um, to, for, for content, for discussions, for groups, for all of those features where you have those creation forms for users to make them uh, less daunting also. There's a lot of options that we already discussed. Flexibility comes with the payoff of having um, having a bit more complexity in the platform and we're trying to make it as simple as possible and only presenting information that are absolutely necessary to create it and, and then if the user wants to have more options they will have those accessible but a bit more hidden um, under behind behind um, accordions or such so that a first glance only shows really important things. Uh, also going to work a bit on the copy and, and such things. So really going back to the core, looking through whole flows from A to B, where users start, where, where we want the user to end, and what are steps in between. We did really research also for this with uh, card sorting, with uh, user testing, A-B testing, and such. So um, we are really busy in, in, in improving those core parts of open source. Same is true for the notification engine. Uh, this is the part that we developed for Open Social, and that also has grown very organically with new features being added, new complexity added, 
and uh, we're gonna go back to the drawing board there and really start going through all interactions that are possible now in open social and see our notifications need for this. How are they aggregated? When are they sent out? How much flexibility do the site and community managers need to set certain settings in this notification engine? Um, and how much customizability is also needed, for example, in the copy, in how the messages are sent, how they are formulated, where do they need to be placed on the activity stream as an email and so forth. So all of those are possibilities and settings are already available, but we're gonna try to make them as understandable as possible and, um, well, ironing out some, some, some issues or some uh, missing, missing links that we have between those notifications. As I already mentioned, we already implemented the GIN um, team in Drupal, who knows, for everyone who knows Drupal, um, as a new admin team. Um, we are also working on a research base to improve the admin experience overall, um, to understand more how are the workflows with site managers, what are their tasks, what are their um, experience, what is their experience with open socials and where are their problems with it and really figuring out how can we onboard them, how can we make this a complex experience of managing a whole community, setting up this community, getting to know open social as painless as possible. So this, this is definitely going to be something that is going to be on the research base for the first half year or so, and then hopefully going to come back um, and in, in features that, that come out of this research. In, in, the, in the second half of the year. So then we come a bit more as to, to, to um, act features that the users, uh, that the user are gonna actively experience um, and that is uh, the group features, campaigns and onboarding. So onboarding is really something that is super important to keep users engaged, um, to make sure that they like travel up this engagement period uh, pyramid that 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 you have within a community from a lurker or a spectator towards a really active member, ideally leading member in the community. Um, onboarding doesn't stop after the first contact with the platform, but it is an ongoing process where you have a continuous onboarding process to teach users new things, to let them know step by step about more possibilities that they can do with an acquisition. So again, here we're going to start with a bit. Uh, with, with more research about this, I'm going to introduce some smaller features. Um, I'm also going to come back to this within gamification and, and engagement automation extension within the second part of the product um, uh, presentation, where we're going to talk about this. Um, as it's also gamification is a big part of how to motivate people, but also how to teach them to continue a certain behavior. Um, next to this, we also really gonna uh, try to. We do have a lot of documentation uh, here on Community Talks actually, where you uh, find manuals for site managers, but also for normal users. If you are stuck on how to create a certain, certain thing, what does this visibility mean? That's all explained here, and we're gonna try to tie this back into the product again, making sure that the user has better access to the right information. Um, for the group feature and campaigns, this is going to be a bit bigger project to, um, to add more depth in open social. So both of them are containing things that are more or less already available. So the group feature um, is already there in open social. Uh, again, we're using, for those people who know, uh, Drupal, the group module there. Um, and we want to we wanna make sure that um, that at the end of the year, this is as flexible experience as possible. Currently, you can set up a group and they have a certain amount of features and we have a few preset uh, variables in terms of accessibility of the group, visibility of the group, and visibility of the content. So for example, a closed group is visible, the group is visible to everybody in the community, the content is only visible to group members, and the access means only people who are invited or whose request is uh, accepted can join this community. Uh, we're gonna open this up. We already have this as flexible groups. This is gonna be the default. We're gonna open this up more in terms of how you can set this. We wanna make it more flexible, how groups can be created, but also give the site managers tools to limit this creation, to make it possible to create an as custom experience with a group 
a creation on those variables that I mentioned as possible. Furthermore, not all groups need events, for example, right? So this is basically an empty tab that's taking up valuable real estate on the platform. So there should be a possibility to remove the tab events from a group uh, or tab, tab uh, profile. And the same, you should be able to add discussions if that is needed or other extensions that you have in open session. So this is a next step within the group of, uh, improvement process that you create on a feature level, not only on an access level, but also on a feature level, a more flexible experience within open session. From there, the last step is even more customizability. So the information page of it is at the moment static in terms of where, which blocks are placed and what information is shown to a user. Obviously, not every experience and contact with a group is the same for all users or for all people creating a group. If you use it for a project, for example, the, uh, the requirements for information you want to show to external people is completely different than if you have it as a working group or if you have it as a local group to connect people with each other. So we're gonna introduce more flexibility as you already know it from the dashboards or landing pages into the group creation process to be able to determine where can I place certain blocks, how is the, how is the information that I'm showing to other users um, relevant and where, where do I need to, to put the focus on. So this is the, the, the journey we're gonna take with the groups for the whole year. Um, again, this is gonna be incremental. Currently we are busy with, busy with this access permission. So within open source 10.0, you're already gonna see the first changes there. From there, we're gonna take it step by step, by quarter by quarter um, in this order that I described. So first, uh, really making sure that the access uh, and visibility permissions are, are, are on point, then um, rolling this out, improving on the flexibility feature-wise, and then improving on the flexibility on, um, on a site manager level, and lastly improving on the flexibility in presentation of the group. And the last part, um, we're really gonna focus on is campaigns. So this is a, like, theme that we created for uh, to combine and bundle a few features that are already existing on open social. As I already mentioned, we really want to focus on tying, uh, tying a knot around the user experience and making sure that, uh, that, it's, it's, uh, that, that we cover the whole journey and that there is a whole step-by-step -step approach for users that feels logical to them. And what we see in reality is that a lot of people use communities um, very, very much within their bubble. Um, I mean, that's a, like, I think a very well-known uh, uh, phenomenon that people are within a social experience and they are part of the social experience and not using every part of this community. The community platforms are diverse and have different bubbles that might overlap in some regards and in other, others not. So these campaigns or themes um, are really making sure that people can go into one of those bubbles and get like an overview with a dashboard and follow topics uh, and follow taxonomies that they get information about the, the parts of the platform they are interested that um, they have uh, relevant content in this area that they can, that they get suggested groups, suggested content and so forth. So the whole campaigns and theme um, approach for us this year is gonna be, how can we make sure that all of the content types and all the different groups and features we have to inform users, to keep them engaged, can be bundled around, uh, around certain topic areas, certain local areas, whatever the split within different communities is to, um, to segment it this should be possible to, to really rally users around those, those segmentations. Um, this also means there's going to be some management part of it. So we're working on different options to visualize this also, the segmentation, so to get information, more detailed information about this specific segment A or segment B. How are people interacting there with content? Which topics are the most important in this area and so forth? So the this campaigns approach or theme approach will not only be visible for the user, but also for the site managers. And 
um, it, we already experimented a lot with it last year uh, in collaboration with the National University of Sec and Historic Pool um, and made a lot of experience and gonna try to uh, implement this throughout the whole product more and more in the next year. Again, this will gonna be not one big bang at the end of quarter three or so, but an incremental approach where we're gonna add more and more of those things per quarter, some of them as extensions, some of them in the core product, as much as possible as a core product, um, obviously, and also there, but it needs to make sense for everyone and not be super incremental or super important only for a certain part of our, our target. So far to um, the core vision uh, of consolidating um, and improving existing features, I think all of them touch aspects that we already have on the platform, but where we're gonna go deeper into the vertical or where we're gonna improve on the feature um, or revisit it to make it uh, more appropriate with our current vision of the work. So that leads us to the second part, which I already touched a bit, where there is also some overlap with the extension development, um, where we're gonna try to increase the ways to utilize open source. So this is always a decisive factor for us, um, is, is an extension going to add more maintenance effort or does it need a third party tool or is it only relevant to specific applications of open social? Um, open social has the flexibility to be applied to different areas, maybe in, in, in engagement communities where you're going to try to rally around a certain topic, where you want to create local, um, local groups where people can meet up in real life, hopefully at one point again, or where um, and knowledge sharing communities, uh, e event communities that tie um, that tie online or real life events or uh, sessions to to a to a um, educational plan or to ex to an educational community where you can continue the value creation you have in this event or in this uh, session you workshop whatever the. The, the, the real life meeting is and create an ongoing uh, community, ongoing discussion out of this singular event that you, you have. So all of those have obviously a bit, a lot of overlap, which is summarized in the core, but then there are also specifics that are only applicable to those communities. And those are usually extensions for us. Um, and a few things we wanna really focus on there, there's a lot more than those three main points, but I'm going to focus also tiny constraints wise on those. Um, and that's just like really the synchronous communication, uh, automation engine and the monetization. So again, um, we've seen in the last year that more and more um, communication, collaboration has been moved towards digital spaces um, or also before you've seen that the, continue, the continuation of uh, as I said, a workshop is in the digital space. People are really used to it, and um, but that also need, uh, changes a bit the requirements of how synchronous, how immediately this communication to be. If you're gonna have a workshop, that's a different requirement than a discussion that goes over four months. Um, so we, we have been already working with partners together and are also gonna continue with this um, in the first half of the, half of the year to add a lot more synchronous communication methods and, and uh, add them as basically replacements or alternatives towards already existing features. So it is already possible to, for example, to, to send private messages or to collaborate with people on a specific uh, node, but we're gonna add a real-time chat and a real-time uh, collaboration tool. Um, also, we're working on the webinars and support. I'm gonna come back to this in a bit to just go through, through those a bit more. Um, further, the second part we also already started working on, but which will be, and which will be a big focus, especially within the first half year of, the, of, the, um, of 2021, will be the automation engine. So um, we, we worked on a, on a system that allows uh, action trigger uh, condition system. So, I'm gonna give a quick examples to visualize it a bit. So for example, the action would be a user performs action X. So the user creates an account or the user joins an event and the uh, trigger will then be a certain action that the 
system performs. So a notification will be sent out or um, uh, it, the user will be added to list X or to group Y. So, and those can be obviously connected in a lot of different ways to create a really, um, a, which has a big potential to, to, to really um, optimize certain, certain community management tasks, but also um, just create a more lively and more, um, more engaging environment for the users because I see an immediate reaction of the system to my action. Um, I get a reminder to, to events and so forth. And those are all very specific. So theoretically, we could add them already with that, with the current engagement, um, with the current event, um, so current notification system that we have on open source. So the problem with this is that it might be relevant to some and not to others. So here we also again want to really focus on the flexibility of it, so that you as a site manager or as a community manager can really determine is this relevant, is are we really focused on events? Are we focused on discussions? Do we need to have more triggers around this content type or uh, uh, around the, this part of top or this specific topic? Um, so this is this is going to be um, something that we're going to have to work on the whole quarter one to roll it out. We're already uh, working on it since Q4 and are already in a testing phase, uh, but. As, as I said, there are those actions and those triggers, um, and this will come with a basic set of those um, at the beginning, and we're gonna work on extending this more and more and more, um, and also gonna collaborate with uh, all of our clients or partners who come up with a good use case for an action or a trigger that say, this is really missing, or this will really help foster engagement, this will help uh, increase the amount of people attending to this. So Jamila, for example, sending out now, um, uh, manually notifications will not be needed anymore because you can set like two days in advance, send out this notification for, for event X. Um, so this will be uh, still a bit of, uh, still a lot of focus for us to make sure we can, um, we can roll it out properly. Um, oh, only I can click that, sorry. Um, sorry for the delay. Um, so uh, this will be a big part of the focus, but next to this, there's also the gamification aspect. So with the same action condition trigger system, you, there will be a second, second application within Open Social, and it will be the gamification. Um, I'm going to come back to this again in a second um, because I want to go a bit more in depth in it, and, and there are also different. Um, the last part, which will be more the focus of the more second, focus of the second, half, uh, which will be more the second half uh, focus of the second half of the year, um, is um, obviously something that is super relevant for a lot of organizations. Especially again, moving towards this digital spaces approach, where you have uh, where you replicate um, actions or interactions that you already that you already have in real life. Towards um, towards a towards a digital space. So, um, and then you obviously need to replicate replicate these interactions as closely as possible. And money is just an aspect of that. Buying a ticket, pur pur purchasing a certain uh, content or something like this. So we're gonna introduce this to Open Social to um, to help organizations um, fund their their communities and create more more value out of this also from a, from a, a monetary aspect. So um, as I already mentioned, synchronous communication, I'm gonna go a bit through the specific features that are in, on, on, in the pipeline there. Um, as I said, real-time chat is something that we are working on. Um, this will also be available beginning of the year, um, somewhere mid quarter one, quarter two, and um, we we basically gonna replicate at the beginning the functionality that the messaging currently has in open social, but then in real time, so that uh, you have a chat feeling to it that uh, you don't need to currently you need to go to the messaging page to answer there, and um, which obviously takes users out of flows or 
they need to wait to react till they finish the current what they're currently doing on the platform and the chat will really improve how people can interact the second part is the real-time collaboration which i already mentioned so um, this has been developed in uh, partnership with uh, Fallout. Uh, so we're gonna introduce this uh, for the rest of the community um, where you can exchange the normal editing part in the in the background in an edit form with an inline editing real-time collaboration form. So this is, is a bit like a Google Docs or um, um, any other real-time collaborating form that you know where people can who have the correct permission who have editing permission for a note can write and suggest things leave comments and so forth and to see who is who is currently collaborating on you you have a vision, version control and so forth um, otherwise it's going to behave the same as any other um, form um, an editor in open social and the um, real uh, the inline editing has another advantage. So those people who do not have uh, editing permission get commenting permission. So they can inline comment on certain tools. So if you have, for example, ideas in a challenge, this is super helpful because people don't leave, need to leave a comment at the bottom of the piece of content, but they can say, hey, I would rephrase this differently or that, and people can accept it and who have editing permission or decline it or have a bigger discussion within this uh, commenting tool. So I think this is really going to change um, for a lot of organizations how they can use open social in terms of collaboration and not only knowledge, passive knowledge. Um, then we're working together with a partner of ours uh, with, um, for a Zoom and Big Blue button integration for webinars um, or for events or uh, however you want to use it. Um, and uh, this will really help uh, to to um, have a more engaging experience for example for courses but also for as i said like continuation of real life events or um yeah webinars like this and so forth uh, you can tie those to your events and then um it, it a link will appear within the event tied to the opening or starting of the event um, and also tied to the access permissions Um, another thing uh, that I want to mention here is the CRM integrations. So for synchronization of data, I, I, when we're talking about synchronous, synchronous communication, um, obviously this direct communication is real-time chat and so forth. Uh, video conferencing is super important, but also the data behind it is really important. So that people um, who have an account already in the organization that are already tied some way to the organization are don't have to have a double uh, double administration to fill it in there, fill it in there, but it really needs to happen immediate and needs to happen on a login and ideally, uh, well, both ways, if you uh, edit data here or there, it will adapt so that there's a, a single source of truth basically for the organization, but also for the user themselves. Uh, again, we're working here with partners together that have a lot of experience in this CRM space. Um, but if, this is also a super important approach for us, um, which I also kind of come back later in our initiatives too, that we work with partners who have the experience within the field. We don't need to reinvent the wheel for a webinar or event organization or for, for CRMs. There is in the Drupal community a lot of um, expertise um, and the other way around, they're profiting from our expertise within community building and um, engagement tools. And uh, so there can be like really fruitful collaborations together, um, specializing both tools in this way. The engagement automation, um, I already mentioned, so I'm gonna skip this part. Um, but uh, two things I wanna mention here that are really interesting is uh, third party web hook connection. So this engagement, uh, this action trigger system can be obviously also used for, uh, for ha to, have, to have triggers outside of open social. So while a trigger can be uh, send a notification within open social. It can be also write that, write this user into a, into an Excel list or something. For this, you can, for example, use Zapier. Um, so we're going to look actually into a Zapier integration to make open social open towards connecting via those web systems. 
further. Um, so this is probably also, um, so from a timeline base here, we're gonna start, we are already working on implementing the notification engine. We're gonna build new triggers throughout one and two, optimizing the whole feature, optimizing the whole process. And then after that, so probably Q3, um, end of the year or something like this, we're gonna look into the third party web application. Um, then another thing is uh, gamification. Um, which, uh, as I said, is also connected to this to this uh, module, and um, there we uh, gonna have two different applications basically. So while gamification is obviously like badges and points and um, certain challenges for users, uh, like X amount of topics, uh, create this amount of events, moderate certain things. Um, this is really important and. Uh, is, is a big part of gamification, but there is also another part that is under the hood. And this is actually the first thing we're gonna focus on and we're currently exploring. Um, and that's the leaderboards and insights part. So those leaderboards, again, can be a great motivational tool to show who are the persons um, engaging the most with a certain topic or in general with open social, with your installation of it. Um, but also it gives a lot of insight to community management. Because this gamification module is so customized, it's, it, it doesn't have like, um, it, it can come with a certain preset, but you can, as a community or site manager, can really determine, oh, this is important for us, events are important for us, this action is important. So you define what are beneficial, what is beneficial behavior on your platform and how to en enforce it or, or stimulate it. Um, and when you define this, when you come up with this concept for you, that also means seeing who the people are who um, who are those super users who really um, perform the actions that you deem as beneficial gives a lot of insight to community managers and helps them foster that behavior, giving them additional permissions, helping them making them moderators and so forth. So this is the first. This is a very important step towards um, creating this engagement pyramid, making sure that you. Um, have a strong base within your community to um, uh, that that helps onboard new people, that helps community managers keep engagement high, drive the are are really uh, yeah, content content drivers, and also help uh, moderate communities. So those two aspects are really important for us for gamification. We're working on this Q1, Q2. Um, and and hopefully gonna gonna roll it out already with the MVP version pretty soon. Um, and um, then another part of this, um, which I'm not gonna go too much into. Yeah, there's a lot of information online about this. We're also probably gonna have a sec separate webinar about the whole blockchain integration. Uh, we're working together with uh, Open Social X <laughs> co-founder uh, Niesco with his new project, uh, the Thanks Blockchain, and um, to integrate the gamification part in it, to have the data stored, to have basically the um, gov sorry the governance run over the blockchain, um, which is really interesting. It's uh, really uh, uh, exciting to work with them together to uh, see the possibilities that are there. Um, and uh, we're gonna end of January, beginning of February or something. Um, Niesko and I are gonna talk about this a bit more for everyone. Um, oh, it's obviously not core vision, but um, extension vision, uh, monetization. So as I said, important to create this um, real life aspects um, of business, of collaboration, of communication within online spaces. So the, um, the monetization will be something we're gonna focus already this quarter on in terms of research. And then second half of the year with integration with payment tool um, based on the research we're doing. And then we're gonna have three aspects that are relevant for us where we're gonna focus on, uh, which is not set in stone yet, but which we identified preliminary as relevant for us. And those are ticketing, membership payment, and foundation or donation for campaigns, for projects, and so forth. So ticketing obviously tied to certain events, um, also fit, uh, focus, uh, focusing on uh, the aspects we wanna, we see open social strong in, so continuation of real life events, of uh, webinars, conferences, and so forth. Um, 
and uh, also fostering like those online webinar tools that we're having. Um, and then uh, membership payment is uh, a bit broader in terms of how you can apply it. So you can either limit access to open source, but also you will be able to limit access to certain content. So you have a basic membership that is free and then have uh, certain courses or documents, whatever, be able on, or be only possible to access um, with this membership. So the third part is uh, fun, fun, uh, fun funding, sorry, funding and donations. Um, that uh, we'll focus a bit more on project-based funding. So this is also tied to a whole new entity type, um, which is going to be project. And to, tied to this, you can then um, also set monetary goals that are, need to be achieved for this project to be successful. So it's going to be a whole um, new thing that we want to try uh, implement in open social, um, probably end of the year, if possible. Um, but uh, it's 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 uh, something I think is very interesting for a lot of organizations to showcase their or, uh, events or projects to show who is involved in it, to show the connection progress, but also to be able to have a place to well well raise funds and uh, for, for this or for people to contribute with donations to it. Um, due to time reasons, I also re um, mentioned this already a few times, so you can see it back in other webinars that we gave. Um, also, there is a very well written um, blog post about this uh, that explains it better than I could here, um, is our decoupled project. I still wanted to mention it because it is really big part of our vision of open social. So as I mentioned at the beginning, we um, want to make open social accessible. We want to, we, we really believe in this uh, uh, open, trust, trustworthy web. And um, for us, it's not replacing functionality that's there, that tools that do it better. So we want to, we see open social as a hub and big part of it is rewriting our um, API structure. So we're going to um, have an API approach first from, yeah, already it's half a year where we uh, start rewriting every, uh, every, everything for GraphQL um, so that people don't uh, in, with the end goal of decoupling the front end of open social, so how it looks towards the back end that the queries run. So the whole, um, the whole back end will be still run in Drupal, will be the same, all the functionality will be there, and our front end will work in um, in, in uh, React, and then um, be a bit, um, we, but, but we look a bit different, but we'll be especially, uh, it will improve the performance of it, uh, it will improve the flexibility, the speed in which we can innovate with our front end and adapt the front end for its new needs. Um, and also, it's removing some limitations that are currently there due to our connection to it. And as a second part, oh, um, so those are the points I already mentioned. Um, and as a as 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 a extra, um, it will make open social accessible for third party tool integration because everything every information that open social puts out will be available in APIs. So, for example, you could connect one open social installation to another and cross post topics for events and so forth. But you could also just load it into another Drupal site or to any other site. So this will be a really a gradual, gradual step. So we're gonna do this um, progressive decoupled. So it doesn't it doesn't come to the big bang, but step by step by step, we're gonna rework everything of open social. So we started actually with the chat that's already built in React. We're gonna continue with search and overview pages. We're gonna continue then with content, with groups, with all the entity types, and then probably with other pages, and then with the profile and so forth. So really step by step, this is going to be a long-term vision for the next year, for the next two years, probably even till it is completed um, and in the end. So um, yeah, again, uh, there is a blog post explaining this in a bit more detail, also with the technical um, with the technical part of it. So there is also a short explanation of how how the module is set up. Um, 
what what the plan is in, in, in the long term and um, how we can how we can uh, profit from this and how the open source legislation is going to change for it. Also, again, here quick uh, um, summary of how it will transform the product. Um, if you are interested in this, uh, as I said, we're going to also share obviously those ship slides and uh, there's, there's the blog post. Lastly, before we come to the conclusion of this webinar, um, I want to share some more things that are ongoing. So, um, yeah, with this, with all of this, uh, we're also going to improve the automation and update flows. So, um, next to the core and the extensions, we obviously offer our SaaS solution, where we also are very busy working on how optimized, how how much self service there is possible, um, how how easy the transitions between different tiers of open socials are, how easy you can transition between tier two, uh, one or two, how easy you can enable certain extensions, disable them again and so forth. So there's going to be a continuous improvement in this. We have a, an infrastructure team that is working hard on this. It's also improving performance and, and hosting parts of this. So uh, this is definitely something that is ongoing where I really didn't focus on today as it is um, also quite technical. Um, as I already mentioned a few times, we're working with experts um, uh, and, and um, uh, partners of ours to improve the way we conceptualize new features. How, um, well, for example, how we do research about uh, certain topics really from the, from the basis for the admin workflows. We did a lot of research with a, with a partner for um, other features. We did technical research with partners or how, uh, we collaborated with them. So, and also here, this, the last part that we want to extend this partnership program um, is really something we're going to focus on on the business side of open social so that um, we can benefit from all of those people working uh, with open social, they are using open social. There are a lot of agencies that, uh, that use the open social for different purposes. And uh, we really love to hear their feedback, but also obviously want to um, help them make open social successful and ideally get some contribution back as well as we want to contribute more to um, their projects, but also to Drupal, as I mentioned. Um, that's it from my side. So we don't have a lot of time anymore. If there are a lot of questions, um, I'm, I'm more than happy to answer them uh, a bit longer than the one minute we have left. So um, are there any questions from anyone? If, if, if not, or if you need a bit of time to digest it, uh, think about it. Um, as we said, we recorded this. Uh, it's not going to be online for another week yet, though, uh, because, as I said, sneak peek to our new branding. So we're going to, I promised our development uh, marketing department to hold it back for another week. But then it will be available. Uh, you can rewatch it. Uh, we're going to share the slides also then in a week. Uh, you can contact us always. Um, Camila, the sales team, our marketing team, whoever you, you, you get um, for, for any questions. Great. Then um, I'm going to close it off here. Um, uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you for your time. I hope it was uh, interesting for you. I hope it helped you get a bit uh, more understanding in the vision of open social, how we want to move further, what we think is important to improve in the product, um, and how well our next year is going to look like. Hope to hear all, soon, soon from all of you and um, have a great day. Thank you.